Tonight, as we begin to celebrate Black History Month, we take an in-depth look at the time a PD school was first integrated. Now, the historic 1954 U.S. Supreme Court case of Brown v. Board of Education ruled that racial segregation in public schools was unconstitutional. Within that case was Briggs v. Elliott in South Carolina. The court's mission to abolish school segregation led to dozens of schools being built in the state in an effort to equalize the number of black and white schools. Carver High School in Lake City was one of them. News 13's Annette Pegler begins our Black History Month series right now with a special report about those who attended Carver when it was first integrated. Annette. Megan Bob in 1950, South Carolina passed a bond to equalize schools. It will take years, even decades, for some schools to finally embrace desegregation. Current Lake City Mayor Loveth Anderson was part of the first mandated integrated class of Carver High School, a school he says produced exceptional people in the community. Carver High School was initially known as the Lake City Colored Elementary and High School on Graham Road. It housed grades 1st through 10th, but eventually that building couldn't sustain the population. They knew they needed to have a, another elementary school, and when they moved the high school students over to the new Carver, then the elementary students took care of the Carver Elementary on Graham Road. Now as two separate buildings, the new Carver High School housed grades 9th through 12th, Although the Brown versus Board of Education ruling came in 1954, the mandatory integration at Carver did not happen until the early 70s. You know how it is when you put people together, that's just life, and uh, everybody has their little chalk lines they may want to draw sometime. But for the most part, we didn't have a lot of issues like other places did. Lake City Mayor Loveth Anderson was part of the graduating class of 71. He said it wasn't until the school integrated when he realized many of his teachers were working with limited resources. Intellectually, they, 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 they were fine. Sometimes there were other things that went along with the classes that they would pull money out of their own pockets. Gloria Tisdale, president of the Carver High School Alumni Association, graduated in 1969. She said when she attended Carver, students were given a choice to attend a school that was integrated. People said it was separate but not equal. And as I said, we, we, had no, we didn't know anything about that. All we know is we were in school, we were getting an education. And at that time, Tisdale felt it was efficient. Well, that particular moment is what I knew, all right? I felt I didn't know any, any different. But later on, as an adult, after getting out, I realized, no, the education was not the same. But at that time, I thought we were getting what we needed. Nonetheless, many Carver High School graduates became prominent local and state leaders, educators, doctors, ministers, and one of its most notable alumni is astronaut Dr. Ronald McNair. The Dr. Ronald e. McNair Life Center, uh, he wasn't allowed to uh, check books out there, but now bears his name. Uh, and he sits right on Main Street. In 2006, alumni Rufus Timmons and John Gaston created the Carver High School Alumni Association. We wanted to not let Carver be forgotten. And it was a way of our keeping in touch with fellow schoolmates and as well as being uh, positive in the community. The group's mission is to give back to the community through scholarships for seniors, turkey drives, and donation drives for the Boys and Girls Club. We wanted to continue that legacy, so um, we would always be remembered. Now, Tisdale's class was roughly 200 people. She says the Alumni Association is always welcoming those who graduated and family members of those graduates. If you'd like to help their cause, you can go to our website, wbtw.com, for more details. Back to you. Thanks so much, Annette, and we also invite you to tune in to News 13's Honoring Black History Special. That's coming up on Monday, February 28th, 9.30 in the morning, and that's when that will go on at oh, the end of the month. 